Hey guys, this episode of The Read is brought to you by Squarespace. Squarespace is the easiest way to create a beautiful website, blog, or online store for you and your ideas. Squarespace features an elegant interface, beautiful templates, and incredible 24-7 customer support. So if you need to upgrade your Instagram boutique, head to squarespace.com now and enter offer code READ at checkout to get 10% off. Squarespace, build it beautiful. And now, let's move on. Hello. That's what people typically say when they come to your door. So if you want to be the jazziest bitch on the block, I suggest you go on over to our good friends at Ring and get you a fancy video doorbell. That way you can see and talk to anyone at your door from anywhere in the world using your smartphone. For more information on that great gadget, go to ring.com slash the read and get $10 off your doorbell. Now let's start the show. It doesn't matter what comes. Fresh goes better in life. No way. With mental <laughs> fresh and full of life. Bet you won't. Nothing gets to you. Fresh and fresh and cool. I don't know where it goes. Fresh and fresh and full of life. Mental's better with mental's freshness. Mental's better with mental's fresh and full of life. Mentos, the fresh maker. Mentos. Not you in this jazz club rendition of that fucking jingle, though. <laughs> I want with your it's ass today. It's full of life, bitch. Don't get your life, bitch. It's full of life, bitch. Don't get your life, bitch. It's full of life, bitch. Hey. What is wrong with you? Do you remember those commercials? Oh, yeah. They were the cheesiest. They were the absolute worst. But Mentos themselves were good as hell. And so. Oh, my gosh. I love them. Mentos was the candy that my, um. My grandma gave me in church. Really? Yeah. It was Mentos. Sometimes, like, if it was, like, if she was feeling festive, we would get, like, the the fruit medley version. Oh, yeah. Then those fucked the game up. Them bitches were like. Them bitches was good. You know, but usually it was just a cool peppermint. I just, I don't know where that came from. My grandma had the cinnamon candies, which I always hated and still do. (laughs) Remember the commercial where that man was like... Like, he sat down on the bench, and then, like, all that white paint was on his yeah. suit. Yeah, he was like, And then he oh. was like, mm, this Mentos gives me an idea. <laughs> I'm just gonna. And then he just rolls around on yeah. it and gave his suit pinstripes and was like, going to work, because. Like, no one can tell this is paint on my suit. I'm white, so. <laughs> and the Mentos will make the jock clean and Can you feel imagine all if better. a nigga was to go to work with all that paint on it? They, paint. Jerome! <laughs> Go home. Do we have to call HR because you know better? There's a dress code here. We don't Mr. Play. Watkins, get your ass <laughs> out of the building. Now. What the fuck made escort you Escort yourself out. So I'm um, uh, Minty Fresh. Okay. And I am Amelia Boynton Robinson. Sure. And this is The Read. Um, so. Welcome back. <sighs> Black excellence. This week. You don't sound happy about the black excellence. I'm, you know, I'm full. Okay. Of. Full is really just the word. <laughs> there just isn't, by there's no need to expand on it. Okay. I feel like it speaks for itself. But All there's right. just. I'm to the brim. Okay. However, I'm going to fly above, much like <laughs> the black excellence this week. Okay. Mariah Brown is the first (laughs) African-American high school student in Mm -hmm. Delaware to receive a pilot license, which also makes her, I guess, the youngest. She's 17 years old. Wow. And she just got her license. I think she was in, uh, what is it, uh, the Air Force uh, JROTC. Oh, that high school thing. All I remember about ROTC was that they had, like, they would come to school dressed like Call of Duty. And <laughs> then they also, like, at the pet rallies, they would swing around the fake guns. Yeah, they got to come out and do the part with the fake guns. And I was just like, you know, I love you because <laughs> back then Bush was president. I was so going to say, like, you I don't know if you No, oh. it was just like, we may leave high school and then that's going to be it. Like, yeah. I don't know. Yeah. I remember 
ROTC vividly though. Like, I really didn't know what it meant. I just knew that them niggas were wearing army fatigues. And I shit thought they were just like first period <laughs> pre army. <laughs> like I figured they were just pledging like the military kind of like they had already decided to make the military their career and they were just getting an early start on it. That's what I thought about them. But I really didn't know what it meant. I had a crush on somebody in ROTC, so I when they got to wear their uniforms, it was. <laughs> And what's she like today? Uh, well, you know what? And don't do this to me. <laughs> I'm not going to take this from you. Them heifers used to be looking real sharp at them fucking. They um, did. And them, you them damn shit. right. Yes, they sure did. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. We had right. some studs and them <laughs> motherfuckers too with their medals and shit on there <laughs> looking like, proper. Mm. Them bitches used to come to school and show the fuck out. Oh and they God. could swing around rifles and shit. During homecoming Bitch, week, we had uh, gender vendor day. So don't let the stud like y'all were the, progressive as shit. Oh, we were. We had yeah, a couple of gay clubs and all that, but like <laughs> studs covered the school with like fake mustaches. That was high school. <laughs> I mean, that was Halloween Woo. for us in high school. Oh, okay. Yeah. That's when all the trade showed their asses <laughs> because they came dressed <laughs> like women with these ridiculous boobs and these yeah. horrible wigs they found somewhere mocking girls all day long and See, plenty of them. Niggas the boys are never first really. All right. Today. See, I wasn't going to do just all want that. to say right. that. Okay. You know, that's something to think about. Okay. <laughs> and that's fine. I wouldn't even go take it there. But you yes. know, some people don't have to be in high school to do it all right what are you some people are just <laughs> you, <do. laughs> you stop so anyway congratulations to mariah brown for being black and excellent such a young age yes. and for being you know bold and brave enough to fly because girl <sighs> mm-hmm. i don't think it could be me oh and shout out to the young lady in south carolina who's like the youngest judge ever in that county or something did you hear about this some 25 year old girl. I did hear about Jasmine that. Twitty, that's her name. She's the one. She's like a judge at the age of 25. <laughs> what? I was doing nothing. Ugh, I can't. Y'all are everything. Just well, brilliant. Good luck yes. And God bless. So, is it time for the whatever you've decided? So, this week in, um, in a whole batch of ugly. <laughs> I, th- I feel like you should know that Facebook really misses Bitch You Guessed It. I'm not doing it. First of all, the Bitch You Guessed It comes from, like, the guy who did the song or whatever is, like, a nutcase and kind of dumb. And <laughs> he, I don't know, looks like a polyp or something. I don't really And didn't he say something crazy about, about Beyonce? I feel like that happened so, Like, recently. that's how I knew about him initially. And that's kind of why I started to mock him. Mm. And then it turned into like oh keep doing it it's so funny because you're loud <laughs> and then it turned into me just terrorizing you with yes. it which became my personal right that's you got how, a lot of joy. that's when it became fun for me right because you were over it, to it. Mm-hmm. but now i am over it once again and i will no longer be doing okay it. so all right <laughs> so everyone will just have to accept it you know i will just continue to say whatever the fuck i want to <laughs> until i come up <laughs> with a proper name for okay. that segment that of the fun. show. That or I'll just fun. go back to calling it Hot Topics. No, nah, you're probably not going to do that. You're probably always going to say something ridiculous. This week in Nene versus Wendy, oh Clash my. of the Titans. <laughs> See, I swear to God, I cannot deal with your ass. Are we going to have a reality show moment? At least Wendy Williams has, like, panache and, like, knows how to talk to, like... I can't like she has like and you know like I mean but Wendy has is really like a like... fair grip of like words and like her teeth don't prevent her from pronouncing words properly. <laughs> yeah, but she's still on that same sliding scale of like neeniness. It's not like she's so far out of she's like Nene's vision. And Nene is southern. <laughs> okay. All right. Well, I mean, and that might just be the only difference, but, but as far as I'm concerned, they're basically the same like person. Like she read the books on her coffee table okay all right like they're not just there so is it really something where it's nini versus Wendy? i don't know i really just... just that was the name of the thing for this week and then i just decided to branch off on it okay. because <laughs> why not who cares all right um i thought we were gonna talk about reality tv for a moment oh we're gonna oh excellent but first let's start with um amber rose and black china are allegedly just, I guess, a few ink drops away from a reality show. Why? On um, MTV. What are we going to see that we can't already see on their Instagrams? That's a great question. 
Because I feel like they have already not been keeping a lot to themselves. So uh, this quote here says, uh, production claims the show won't be ratchet. It will instead focus on the women taking care of their kids Mm -hmm. while also juggling work and being mothers. Um, So taking care of their kid is not the same as being a mother. Did that bear repeating? Who wrote that? <laughs> Make no damn sense, girl. And you could, you're could you not going to sit up here and tell me a lie that Amber Rose and fucking Black China ain't going to be ratchet on a reality show. That just don't even make sense. So what is it going to be called? Mm. When my baby left me. No, because Tyga has a show on MTV too, so... I don't think that it's going to be like anything directly attacking him, but you, nobody is going to. It's not just him. Right, but nobody nobody is going to watch them if they're not talking about their stupid ass baby daddies, though. Like, that's my point. So, you're talking about this show ain't going to be ratchet. Okay, if that's true, it's not going to be ratchet. Amber, though, is like, Amber is going the, uh, I guess, the Drea route and trying to be like the reformed ratchet, where it's like, when did Drea hit. You know how Dre, I think, I don't follow her enough because I don't understand why anybody does. She's barely living. Like, literate. everyone says, oh my gosh, Dre is so beautiful. Like, she's just so pretty. Like, she's just so beautiful. Like, oh my God. And it's like, okay, what else? Like, <laughs> She can be, but then sometimes she looks like a lightning bug. But she does have, like, a, a gorgeous body, a pretty face. I'm not going to take that from her. I feel like she looks like one of the teardrops on Baby... On um, like Birdman, yeah, face. and that's not inaccurate. The problem is that she doesn't have anything else but her face. So when you watch these shows and and Drea's ass is on there, she usually is not making any sense, or she's arguing with people for no damn reason. And I don't see why All Amber I'm Rose would do that. Like that's taking a step backwards. Amber wrote this book about how to be a bad bitch. <gasps> wrote, and you know she's been fighting for women and. She's been, you know, speaking out against, like, sexual assault and okay. this whole thing. So, I'm imagining that maybe it'll be, like, like Teen Mom produced by Mike Will Made It. <laughs> what the fuck? The fact that I can see it, though, like, the two of them with car seats in the back. Like, right, like. <laughs> riding around, talking about that shit. It's 3 p.m. I just woke up. <laughs> club was mad lit last night the baby is crying and you know now i'm making formula and this is life as a mother you know (laughs) it just gets this real and you never know (laughs) you never know what's coming for you and like and i'm just so stressed all the time and just so busy but you know life of a mom right (laughs) and i actually read an article that you shouldn't breastfeed because in actuality the enzymes in your breast. Like, I just feel like yeah. it's going to be like a whole bunch of that. And then they're going to wear big sunglasses and leggings and like work out together and, you know, work be out in normal. full makeup and without sweating. Right. And then there'll be like cameo appearances from like uh, DJ Random Khaled, Bird, Sierra, and, uh, Chris Brown, Lala. She, everybody's friend. Yeah, Lala is friends with everybody. So, it's just- and Kelly Rowland. Kelly Rowland. <laughs> no, Kelly Rowland's not going to be. Lala is friends with everybody, though. <laughs> I think Kelly Rowland knows she needs to limit her and time tiny. on reality. <laughs> oh, God damn it. Tiny is friends with everybody. I can't fu- How do they look her in the face with them eyes? I don't get it. Don't do that. What the fuck? Oh, no, not Tiny. Monica. Oh. Bitch. Monica <laughs> is friends with everybody. Not the fact Bitch. that you confused Monica and Tiny. No, I knew, but no. But Tiny is friends with everybody she in Atlanta. Is. Monica <laughs> is friends with everyone. Every like, urban that bitch in the industry. is at everybody's <laughs> wedding, funeral, <laughs> shower, yes, premiere. Baby and wedding. Bitch, Monica is friends with everyone. I don't know how Brandy got her ass whipped by Monica. Like, she seems friendly. Like, she's <laughs> nice to everyone. Well, um, anyway, so. She was apologizing to Sierra on fucking radio. Did you see that? Whoa, who was apologizing to Sierra? Apparently, Monica and Sierra aren't friends anymore. Monica and Sierra ever were friends? Okay. Monica's friends with everybody. Oh, right. Like, like you I'm, just said. You have to just assume, <laughs> unless she tells you okay. that she's their friend. Because Monica is everyone's I mean, but friend. fell out for what, though? I don't remember. Like, I guess Something there was, like, some done. kind of rumors that, you know, I guess future... Oh, or she's hell. friends. She's friends with one of the other baby mamas or whatever. But she's oh, like, all of that all is right. lies and blah blah blah. But 
Monica seemed like she's the one who's who is cool with she everybody, like, but don't try her because she'll right, be quick exactly. to cut your ass out. She was like, I, you know, always love and support her, buy her album, girl. It's all nice. All of that. But she was <laughs> that like, was nice. it's the best I can do. <laughs> you know, like, I don't know. I can't. That's all I have for you, girl. Monica's everyone's friend. Okay. Well, good luck to Black China and Amber. I'll watch one episode like I do for everybody. i watch the pilot, and then if I like it, I'll I'll give on. it a fair shot. Yeah. I once... You know, I tried to watch Hoops reality show. (laughs) (laughs) Flavor of me and all these sisters got to take care of these damn kids. Something I don't know. It's just her. Every time I've seen a commercial for that show, it's always been like, oh, my God, you know, woe is us. We all are so, you know, like we have all of these kids and we're so racially ambiguous and like gerb is our expensive. It is like that. It's like the Braxton's with way less money and talent. Sweetheart. But hoops has been out here, you know, shooting for sponsors <laughs> for l- a, like best. a literal decade. Yeah. Like it was flavor of, of love. And then I remember she was dating a uh, <laughs> little flip and Lil I flip. Could... Lil flip happened. He ha- yeah. Time. He had his six months. Or wait, no, was it Lil Flip or... No, not Lil Flip. It was Slim Thug. Which oh, one's real, real tall? Slim Thug is real, real tall because he's Brittany Griner's cousin. Boom. That one then. Because when <laughs> I worked at the fucking American Airlines Arena and was working for the Heat one day after the games, I remember, what the fuck am I talking about? Anyway, who was there with Slim Thug? <laughs> and then it was like somebody else. <laughs> and then it was Shaq. Shaq. And so it was like, how the fuck are y'all talking about how Pampers and shit are expensive and oh my God, and like somebody has to get a job? I don't know, That's maybe. the problem because don't nobody in that house have a job and she's taking care of like her four sisters who are all like a little bit uglier than she is. Okay, And then now. all of they, no, I'm just saying that this is the same way on the Braxtons. Tony is obviously the pretty one. And so the anyway, fall in line good luck else. to Black China and Amber Rose. And all of them 12 kids they have between like the five of them so whew, it's a terrible show though at the very least amber and black no we won't be calling her black <laughs> we'll be calling her china bc <laughs> not birth control either some all you hoes need at least y'all ain't tiger well i mean and that's a small comfort but a comfort nonetheless uncle luke blames kanye west for changing the rap game when asked is that Interestingly a headline? Enough, what was that? <laughs> well, you know, Uncle Luke is going to be the, or Uncle Luke video, rather, is the dress code for the party on Sunday, All the Way Live, which we'll discuss oh more God. towards the end of the show. <laughs> Jesus. Um, just because, you know, I can, and also because I should. Everybody's going to be nude. <laughs> no, plenty in of people have their clothes on in Uncle Luke videos. Okay. Everybody's, Shanae, all right. Okay. Luke. So anyway. The rest of the two live crew. <laughs> well, right. Okay. Everybody else that was a man. <laughs> <laughs> right. Exactly. You got there. <laughs> I mean, there was plenty of girls. Everybody who had clothes on. with a no, penis. That's not true. <laughs> there was plenty of women with clothes on. I'm talking about Daisy Dukes and Haughty Tops and that's fu- that's Bikini cr- Tops. And sh- I'm not mad at it. I'm looking forward to it. I'm just saying. Anyway, so. The interesting about? thing here is they asked him about Ghost Riders, and he was talking about Ghost Riders and everyone having one, and he said something about meeting Missy Elliott back in the 90s. And then he said that rap is different because before Kanye West was wifing all these hoes. <laughs> all the hoes? Rappers were secure with their women, and then he referenced Ice Cube and Will Smith, and that they're still married to their wife, their wives. But they're not. And they well, also have children that are, like, about to have children. Right. Like, you know Their what I'm kids saying? are also good and grown. Kanye and Kim just got together. They and North is all of two. have <laughs> wives. Like, they're... Anyway. And Will Smith didn't even stay with the girl he was with. He ended up... He left her and ended up with... But uh, he is now with Jada. Jada and forever will be with okay. Jada. Okay. God, I'm just saying. Everybody forgets about Trey. Like, he got another kid. I'm just saying. Anyway. So then he said something about, um, we didn't get caught up in the Hollywood thing where rappers are now marrying Hollywood girls, leaving one and going to the next one and leaving this one. We didn't do that. We were very secure. We weren't marrying girls or wife and girls for the internet to blow up. So he's not just saying hoes because he believes all women are hoes. Oh, that's nice. He believes all the women are hoes. And also... <laughs> 
that rappers like <laughs> no i'm kidding he believes that um I guess he's just making a point that I also make, was that all these niggas feel like they need to have some famous-ass motherfucking partner and plastered across social media, Snapchat and Instagram and and, and Twitch and Periscope. <laughs> but and, I don't think that's Kanye's fault. Niggas Black was trying Planet, to stunt with girls a long time Grindr, ago. See? Tinder. Why Grindr, though? Uh, what's the lesbian one? Is there a lesbian one? Church? You make one. That's where lesbians meet each other. What? It's just a terrible. There are no apps. And Barbecues. you know why? It's because it's because there is no penis. I think you need to have a penis in order to have a dating or sex related app or website really be successful because people with penises are the horny ones. Lesbians not going on no damn app look, looking for sex. That's niggas. But anyway. Well Well, not all I would say most of us are not. That's because most of y'all are already married to the <laughs> bitch that you just no! met. Like that is a stereotype that needs to prior. die. We are out here single. It's just that, like, it's like a rule. Lesbians have to be 125 miles apart from each other. Like, the single ones are never in your area. It's always a bunch of bitches who have wives and kids. Ugh. Anyway, this is not about me. Every lesbian I know but you. Okay. Well, no, that wasn't going to be true. Oh, Whatever. Well, see, look at God for once. Anyway, so. I don't even remember what we were talking about just Oh, who then. gives a shit? Okay. Chris Brown is naming his next album <coughs> after one of the cutest babies on the gram. Mm-hmm. Cutest Hollywood babies, anyway. He's naming the album Royalty. And, you know, can't say I didn't see is that Is this coming, the last album that he promised us when he said he wasn't going to do music anymore? He was just going to do one more album and then stop? Is this the one? Listen. I have my fingers crossed. Nobody knows what Christopher is going to say or what he's capable of or, you know, what Especially after he put that <laughs> tattoo on the back of his head. You never know what Chris Brown will do. It's just any old damn So thing. do you want to just go there then? No. I thought, wait, are we not talking about Chris Brown? I was going to segue. Oh, no. no my bad. First. I'm sorry. You, <laughs> please do your segue. Well, I don't even. <laughs> I'm sorry I fucked up your segue. So Chris Brown shaved the back of his head, <laughs> Woo! a portion of the back of his head. Okay. And on it, he tattooed uh, Venus de Milo or whoever the fuck, whatever sculpture or painting or Roman. Sh- I don't know. Did he say why? You know, I don't know, but I don't care. I actually don't even want to know. It's his head. And I'm pretty sure that Chris... Is one of them niggas that like gets tattoos and it's like a spiritual feeling for them and like I think I remember seeing like a, a picture of him getting a tattoo and he was asleep or something. You know, like like niggas who have a whole bunch of tattoos, it's mm-hmm. like like cocaine or something. Right. That was I tried to find something else to say <laughs> in cocaine light just of you know came like anyway. whatever, but it was like <laughs> there's nothing else I could have whatever. It's like you know. Woo! Sex? No, that's bad. Whatever. It's just like an addiction. <laughs> yes. Whatever. And so he was probably like, "Ooh, let me, you know, fuck the game up and just tattoo see, this big thing on the back of my hair." He really needs somebody in his life to be like Chris. I love you. Like I have your best interest in mind. He does and this have is that. a bad idea. He does. Who? Have Who that. is it? I don't know. No, that person isn't there. It doesn't matter. There's it's no one hair. around telling. He's allowed to tattoo whatever the fuck he wants to on his head. God bless him. Um, and shout out to, you know, young royalty out here judging niggas, which, you know, I feel like you should. And that you know, video of at, her looking at that nigga crazy. <clears throat> I love it so much. This next album is entitled, you know, it's named after her and she's named after the money that will be received. It's just, you know, right. it's like the circle of life. And um, it is great. one big circle all completed. But I think Chris is like, I think that's a cry for help. Nobody gets a fucking tattoo on the back of their head. Like, There's plenty of niggas that have tattoos in the audience. I was actually watching Black Ink Crew um, the other day because it came on after the thing that I meant to watch. And in the preview, niggas were boxing, like in the street. And I was like, oh my goodness, what comes after this? Because typically I don't watch Black Ink Crew. Mm-hmm. There's just like a lot. It just feels like, like itchy. It's a lot you know? like just going outside and experiencing New York City on any given day. Right. It feels very familiar. And it's right. just like down the block. It's not, right. you know, it's right I don't feel like I need to watch it because I live it. Right. So, exactly. You know, but 
lo and behold, it it's is good mess. as fuck. Yes, it's so, trashy. So, <laughs> got into that. And, like, one of the niggas on the very first episode that I was sitting there watching got, like, a gas mask or some shit tattooed, like, right smack dab on the crown. Like, the tip, tip top okay. of his head. And was like, yo, my nigga, this shit is who? Like, I don't, it was like, you know, so maybe that's the new thing. Mm. Chest piece, chest pieces. But knowing everything and we know about Chris Brown, I'm going to tuts. say he needs some like some real ass help. Where's his mama at? You know, as long as he's not, you know, shooting up or punching somebody in the face or And that's where it is whatever. with Chris it's Brown fine. now. Like it's as long as tattoo. he's not being violent. It's an odd <laughs> tattoo, but you know, I'm not gonna beat him up for it. Okay. Whatever. I just think that it looks very strange and I hope that you have like some maybe there's some kind of spiritual connection to whatever when is his album speaking of out? venus i don't know but i'm very interested in hearing what it's gonna sound I wanna, like yeah i do too i want to know what that's gonna i'm sound always like. interested in hearing celebrities like post first baby mm-hmm. album music that's always quite interesting especially as a dad and especially as a dad who is you know constantly off the hinges yeah i'm sure he's gonna have that one like sweet emotional song about her like Beyonce did with Blue and, and Sierra be her did in the with... backgrounds being like, "Love you, Daddy." When he's when everybody going home. <laughs> <laughs> when is everybody? I love else you going so home? much, Daddy. Who is this nigga? Why? Is, what is this shit he's rolling up? Where's mommy? Anyway, so, so but yeah, all right. And I Brown. typically do enjoy Christopher's music, even when he's acting an ass. So, you know, there's that. Yeah, sometimes. Um, let's talk about um. Oh, speaking of Venus. She has a sister named Serena, <coughs> who has a sister named. <laughs> Don't do that. Who has a sister named? Uh, they have another sister. Do they? No. You were gonna make a Drake <laughs> joke, and you ain't right. <laughs> and you knew it. <laughs> Drake got me drunk that one time, so I feel like obligated. To and it like, wasn't even that long just, ago. It's not, it know, was like three weeks ago. <laughs> but at the same time, you know, it's Drake. <laughs> It's like everybody knows I love Drake. But they look so cute. They look adorable. So, you know, <laughs> Serena Williams is still out here beasting on these hoes, you Ooh. know. And then every now and then she's like, you know what? I'm just going to fall back for a quick second because although, you know, they say you can't win them all, I can. <laughs> However,. In order to prevent the government from coming and trying to, like, dissect me into little pieces and figure out what I'm made of, I will occasionally <laughs> lose so that you bitches can be nothing but excited for me to come and clock one of these bitches <laughs> with these motherfucking, with these rackets at the next game. So that's what she does, All you know. Right. Sure. And I guess at, uh, what is this? What is this? An open? What? Wimbledon? What in Ohio? Uh, what was the, what where was the were they? they were at? I don't even know. I just know tickets are on sale for the U.S. Open. Well, Ohio. I usually rely on youth to have the answer for these things because this is a sport. Okay, but so I just don't other respect than Ser- the game of tennis, uh, it's just not a real game. Why? I is respect it because some. women are playing. Okay, so all of a sudden it can't be like a tennis, real. Bro. So I don't know. <laughs> we're not talking about loads them. And we're loads talking of about famous the men's women. Players, so if you want to. But if you, you want to have this ass. moment, you go right ahead. <laughs> you go ahead and stand up in your moment then, friend. You do that. Bitch, shut up. <laughs> I love Serena, but I have no idea where she was when this happened. Anyway, she was somewhere being the best. And, you know, Aubrey was there, you know, with pom-poms in his mind. Yes. And being a huge fan, which I always, you know, adore. I think that it's... You know, cute, but it's also Drake. Like he's perpetually cute. Mm-hmm. Like it's just you, know, you can't. Yeah, stop. Cute shit is just what he does. Even when he's like trying not to be cute, like when he's like ruining a rap nigga's career, yeah, or like wearing a ski mask. It's almost it's like like a Yorkie or something. Okay. Like when someone's at the door and they're just kind of <laughs> Drake like, is like a Yorkie. <laughs> you know, like because it's like you know, like. <laughs> It's like someone who owns like a Jack Russell Terrier yeah. and a pit bull okay. because it's like the smaller dog is usually the one with all of the like yeah the bark and like you know all and that's the, the point yeah, yeah that's the, the point and it's the fun and then they always have the muscle behind that will like actually rip you to pieces yes and that's what Drake is and I feel like that's why Drake wins <laughs> okay I think they're adorable together like, I, I don't. think it's 
Why? Because, girl, first of all, everybody knows. This is not even the first time they've done this. Everybody knows I that. I know. I know. But it's Drake, cute. It's cute. The way he isn't. smiles at her is adorable. He looks, like, so happy. Like, like he really is into her, at least admires and respects I her. Actually, I was, I was here for Aubrey. R-I-H. Oh yeah, Drake I liked. I really liked Drake and Rihanna. I felt like Rihanna. I felt like Drake was not able to handle Rihanna. I didn't, and I still feel. And that I kind of liked Serena better with Common. I know that that's like petty, <sighs> given you know, yeah, history. But like, I don't know. Like, I just Drake and uh, Drake and Serena. Uh, what I don't is know. it? Because <laughs> I think it's so adorable the way that they are always. Well, not always, but like they were at this restaurant all like cuddled up together and. Like they just and he was cute. trying to give her a hickey to glare in the sun in her next game. <laughs> I'm sure he was not trying to give her a hickey in public. I just, I don't know. I'm not here for. I just, that's not the thing Do you, for me. Mm, never mind. I feel like Serena. I don't see Serena with a rapper. I don't know because Common is like. Even that was weird. Common and Erica was like that, that made sense. right. That made sense yeah. to me. And she had him, you know, wearing brown paper bags and, and like wheat socks. And it was like, yes, this makes sense. Mm-hmm. And then he got with Serena and it was kind of like, <laughs> okay, socks. because like, I don't know. Like, I don't. It's just something about this. Something you know. about it. I just don't vote for. Oh, but I mean. But I do still think that Serena is fun. Like a lot of people, I saw a lot of niggas on social media after these photos came out, like, would you wife Serena and this, that, and the third? Nigga, is could her. you be that lucky? What you mean, would you? Would you? Would she <laughs> wife right? you, That's you broke fucking... bitch? Are you fucking out of your cranium, you ignorant? What the fuck? You is have wrong been with sitting you? at your computer for the past four and a half hours scratching your ass and Serena could use <laughs> and you wig help. Serena could use wig help. Well, <clears throat> and a little tinge of the brow. To be fair, most of these girls can. You turn on VH1 that is tr- and Bravo, but, and ninety percent of them girls could use. Some and a lot sickness. of the times, Serena has it, and then sometimes she doesn't. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? Like how Lil Mo is like ninety five percent wrong with her wigs, and then mm-hmm. every now like there's a five percent where it's like, that's the one, Mo. That's the one. That's the one. Yeah. And she takes it off. It's like. Some right. people just but, I mean, don't. They're hit or miss. You can't have everything. Serena is like the she most has dominant everything athlete. Else. She's rich. She's gorgeous. And, Her body is perfect. Like, and I've always just assumed, wig wise, that she just chooses what is chooses what's like aerodynamically best <laughs> for the game. Right. Because to me, like, fuck that. I'm out here trying to win. Right. So you bitches can you know perm whatever or have your leave out do or do whatever feel. whatever. Like, I'm gonna put whatever the fuck I can on top of this bitch yeah so that you bitches have something you see something <laughs> waving in the wind when i'm fucking <laughs> that ass up i just need something but to see, be Tarina, wiggling out <laughs> like that's it you just like my own little personal flag so you aware right, of my damn existence i'm right here beating your assholes to taunt hey, your ass <laughs> off here in the horizon while i'm fucking that ass up but i don't give a fuck what this shit looks like i came here to win right i mean she's a like a top global athlete so if her wig is fucked up that's one thing but these hoes on reality TV, girl your only job is to fuck rappers and have their kids and look good so why can't you get these wigs and weaves together nobody understands it quad i'm talking to you girl <laughs> girl but don't these lace fronts with the lace still attached that you have glued to your Lisa forehead Nicole Cloud. and we can <laughs> <laughs> nobody watches married to medicine but us. oh as well so, like, you hoes are gonna get into this shit quad's wigs is the absolute quad gives you like an occasional like no she doesn't <laughs> like, quad no, she gives never you... gives you an edge <laughs> she never gives you a blend well see but not everyone is able that's not the point sometimes you have to do the best with what you can <laughs> no. In the here and now. No. Like, not everyone is ready and willing to shave it all off and start from scratch. So sometimes <laughs> you just have to give the bitches leeway and allow them to do what they can. So you just so you expect me to just let you be out here with your lace front, just sitting on your head like this with no edges, no Listen, part. every now and then. Like, okay, <laughs> like. So you're just going to paint. From time to time, I've been like, 
that's what I'm you okay we this have to we have to build a scale <laughs> for just build a scale for the weave because you know what you are actually the one who introduced me to bad weaves like I never saw bad weaves that's not true unt- <laughs> that cannot be true you never saw bad no weaves. I saw bad weaves but not the way that I do now oh. like you opened my eyes up <laughs> to the mechanics of weave when these bitches weave. don't have that shit blended <laughs> Of the weave. Like, when you taught me what lead out was and how all of that <laughs> shit worked. And ever since then, I got on the two train and I was like, my God. <laughs> like, oh. It's worse than my you My stars and stripes. Like, this is just not. <laughs> this it's isn't okay. Epidemic. So now I see weave in a whole new way. Well, I'm and I'm unable. Okay. But you know what I'm saying is, Serena, I don't judge her. Oh, right, Serena. You know, it's like, yes. you have to do. The best that you, whatever. Because you know what? But Tennis she's comes literally, first. That's what I'm saying. Comes first. She ain't got time to be sitting around worried about edges and blending and all Did that. Did you read what she said in um, New York Times Magazine about Maria Sharapova being higher than her mm-hmm. on Forbes, even mm-hmm. though she's lower than her on everything else? <laughs> I know I didn't. You should read it. It's a I have great it at quote. home. Actually, I'll get into more of that in my read. But anyway, okay, yes, excellent. Drake. And the, th- the reason I don't really see it for it, I think, is kind of for, like, the same reason I was confused about, like, Alicia Keys and Swizz Beats. It was kind of like, Whoa. who's really climbing on top? You know what I mean? Like, and not just on top, but on top. <laughs> Wanna be on top? Why are so, you, you know what I mean? Like, this way. But that's their business, A and B, through, you know, the rest. Okay. Well, I mean, I just think it's cute the way they smile at each other. And so. I also think that Drake literally has, like, a hotline that blings. I'm starting to think that he's like... I don't think they're serious about each other, though. Like, I think this is just like a thing. No, not at all. Right, it's just like a every now and then. Like I said, they've done this before. Right. So that's what I'm saying. I'm starting to feel like Drake has like... Like a hot pink iPhone. Wow, I thought you were going to say Motorola Razor. I don't know I I mean, it's Drake. (laughs) You know, and Apple and all that stuff. So he probably has, like, an iPhone 7 that's hot pink, and that's the hotline that blings. And I really believe, theoretically, Mm -hmm. that these women call on Drake in times that they want, you know, like, a (laughs) certain amount of, like, fair-skinned companionship and, like, white wine spritzers and, like, a nigga that's actually going to listen to how your day went. I was going to say, I bet Drake is actually a really good, like, friend. Dream date. Like, you would love to go out with him and just have a couple drinks and have a conversation because Drake is really going to listen and, like, talk back to you. Like... I bet you that fucking Serena kicked off them Pumas or Nikes or whoever it is she endorsed. And he got to cracking up them bunions, bitch. Amen. And rubbing her feet and asking her about how her day was and how she felt about the game. And she was like, well, you know, because, you know, Serena is super, you know. Yeah. Perfect, like, everything. She's Total like, oh, perfectionist. Know, I could have whipped that hoe's ass just a little bit more. But, you know, I started to feel bad for her. I could see her <laughs> eyes tearing up. Today. And like, no, you know, you got to let these bitches have it. You're right. Like, I feel like. <laughs> I feel like they like he probably probably has no intention of ever penetrating her. Like I don't see right, that. Right. I feel like he's like a good time to make out and like actually listen to you and mm-hmm. make you feel nice. Or if she's feeling bad about herself, she could text Drake and Drake will send her something that will really lift her spirits. Like, like not just an emoji, but like right. a good quote. But like, girl, I'm sorry you're feeling down when you are the baddest bitch in the game. He probably and none face of these times can her you. and be like, you know what? Let's pray. <laughs> like he's Jewish. Father, God. father who? Heaven. (laughs) Jesus. You know, (laughs) even outside of our religion, we have our religious differences, but I just respect where you're coming from. Like, he just seems like that's... Like, he'll pray for you anyway. Like, it doesn't have to be about sex. Like, he would just, he's going to be there for you because that's the type of nigga that he is. Yeah. And that's why I like it. Oh, well. I'm certain of that. But I feel like Rihanna was probably, like, on a level that Drake could not handle. Like she Drake just... is like, you know, we'll take this as far as you want to take it. Like, it's up to you. <laughs> right. No, it was definitely, like, her decision. I, I love think he him. cut nothing off. I do, too. That's why I think this is so cute. 
if they're going to have that little moment over the next couple of months where they play around and then he's going to go right back to these Instagram hoes, that's fine. <laughs> he's going to. Right. So, and Serena's still going to be rich and the that. baddest bitch. Exactly. She's not sweating nothing. Like She don't give a None fuck None of nothing. Drake's hoes are about to pop up on Twitter talking about, I can't believe he was with Serena when he was just with me two days ago. Bitch, you know your motherfucking role. You know your goddamn place. All you hoes know you will be usurped for Serena Williams. This is no fucking contest. Ain't no debate, ho. Like, Drake is going to send a strong text, bitch. You knew. You knew. That I was coming back whenever I was in town and the game was over. I'm not sweating you, bitch. Serena is not sweating Whoa. you. We're here having fucking chicken parm, bitch, and you're having fucking I'm, spam. You're having your so, feelings. You're having <laughs> You can go ahead and dine on your emotions. Slice of blackness. <laughs> Of sorrow, <laughs> of dark days. And Drake don't have to explain himself to these hoes. And he doesn't because they know their fucking place. They do. They know that when that motherfucking when them wheels touch down mm-hmm. and their motherfucking in, area in code, your city, that <laughs> That's their it. phone That's very but like it's like probably like a raffle. Like when Drake's in their city, it's like oh my god, please let my phone vibrate, Jesus, please, please let it be me this time, God. And then if they you know like <laughs> and then they go on Instagram and then he's gone. And it's like damn, it was that other bitch. Like you know, I feel like. Yeah. That's what it is. Like they know they're not, they're not trying to jeopardize the time. You know he's gonna settle down with a bitch and it's not gonna be you. So you might as well. <laughs> <laughs> it's not, when the time has come, Drake has comes. his girls in order. I'm right. sure of it. Like everybody knows what the fuck this is. Ain't no confusion. All right. So are we done? Uh, shit, you tell me. Uh, we Was talked? that it? <sighs> Do you want to talk about love and hip hop? Oh my god, the reunion. Absolutely. Absolutely. First of all, why was Carly Rae <laughs> why born? sitting up there wearing three rolls of bounty? Don't do that. <laughs> all of them made terrible, well, most of them made some really wretched wardrobe choices. Like Jessica Dime looking like a stripper mermaid in this <laughs> In this sequined... This is Jessica Dimes' first <laughs> season, okay? What does that have to do with anything? That means that her VH1 checks are still fresh. So that was the best that she could do or uh, whatever. Carly Rae done been on this goddamn show since the very motherfucking beginning. And for whatever reason, she is still here. That's true. She brought jo- Young Jock back from the from graves the of Bad Boy South <laughs> and re- resurrected his whole entire being. And then sat up on TV and argued over his ugly, broke ass with two other girls. And then now she's got this whole closet and little five points or whatever the fuck. Stop calling it a shop. It's not a shop. Don't call it a shop. Don't call it a boutique. It is a I rainbow would call it that more changed the like, name. I'd call it more of like a place. I would use the word like thing. You ain't shit. I would use uh, words like uh, happening. Okay. Um, There's a lot of fifteen ninety nine and under clothing in Kyla Red store. There's a lot of spandex. It's just not a, a There's shop. There's a lot of poly blend. The way Ashley <laughs> Nicole is not an artist. You can't just be calling the girls art. Ashley artists. Nicole is just some random girl in Atlanta who needed a check. Like, the word like art is not in the word artist because not. you know that's just how like it means. But I have very low expectations for Carly Red overall because Carly Red has not shown herself to be smart or like worth a damn in any real way. All I'm saying is you can't be talking about Jessica Dimes ass who came well, who's she fresh looked- off of a fucking King of Diamonds poll. I was gonna say and, and just- lots of King of Diamonds money, plenty of stripper money. So it's not like she was broke. Listen, look at the way that Jocelyn Jocelyn had on a fucking Johnny Quest wig <laughs> this season. Okay, I know you don't know who Johnny that is. Quest shit. I know you this. don't know who that is. I go But I know scene. you know what I'm talking about. Okay. In that scene, I saw it. she had on that shit this season. Okay. What in God's name and she was that ocelot, that black panther headband she had on with that them, them two black floss, that, that G-string she had with her asshole out Woo! when she came back on from, camera. Yeah. from the, the, the trap or wherever the fuck it was. Puerto like, Rico. So, girl, <laughs> and have. she has also been here from what? The beginning. But Jocelyn's checks are stronger, and I'm sure, than And she swears Jessica. she's an international Puerto Rican pop That's star. That's just stripper mentality. Okay. And she's fine with that. She up on here TV talking about every box she munched and all the ones she plans on munching. She talks about how she don't give a fuck about Stevie, but she just wants to get fucked and 
continue to get paid. Like she's saying, like yeah. she had. There's no shame in her game, and that's fine. Carly's out here talking about boutiques and how she's, you know, Louis Prada Gucci and Prada there's Gucci. There's no shame. Pop them tags and I pop them tags. Pop them tags. There is no pop shame in Jocelyn's tags. game, but Jocelyn's game Louis is a Louis, lie. Louis, to- Louis Prada Gucci. <laughs> Louis Prada Gucci. <laughs> Louis, <laughs> Louis Prada Gucci. <laughs> Jocelyn be lying about her own damn self to herself and the rest of us. Half the time, no, 98% that, of the time when Jocelyn is talking about her life or career, it is something that she wishes was true instead of something that actually is true. And that is just the truth. Jocelyn knows that she's a stripper bitch doing her best. Okay. Just Does she? Because like according to Jocelyn, she's international pop star and Stevie ain't got no business working with these local ass nobody And you know what? Clothes. Jocelyn probably performs one fuck of a show somewhere no, out she sure doesn't. in fucking she Sudan okay. or like... She probably gives the girls a show somewhere out in, like, Sweden or... She didn't in fucking Bedfordsville or wherever the fuck in the middle of Georgia when they invited her down for their random-ass country gay pride or whatever, and she took her ass down there. Oh, you didn't see that episode. She took her ass down there. I mean, there I don't watch a, the show. Like oh, okay. Either. Well, there has been I a performance, the last few and shows it was wretched. Where Kalina performed with. Wait, are you talking about where she had on that fucking Mighty, Mighty yes, Morphin Power that's exactly Crackhead what I'm ass saying. outfit? <laughs> power Crackhead. What? Yes, that very one. And she was up there transforming the way. Did and you, she's performing at the reunion. I think on the next, either the second she or the third. She performed. She like performs, a Power Ranger. but there is no single, no, no album, no video. Anybody gives a fuck about. She's not streaming. What is all Left this? Hook. Okay, ha. all right. Kick. Ha. <laughs> <laughs> Parappa the rapper ass performance. All the most crazy. I can't do, they, that's true. But, they are all crazy. Woo! I just can't. I can't take it. I can't take it at all. Scrappy sitting up there arguing with Erica. First of all, Man, you're sitting Erica next can't... to someone who slept with Benzino after she was on bl- uh, Basketball Wives. She slept with Benzino. That's you could have ended right there. After she was on Basketball Wives, and now she's sleeping with you. Scrappy, how about you shove a fresh lunch bowl inside of a brown bag and place that brown bag inside of a Jan Sport bag okay. and place that bag on your baby's back and send her off to school? That's what you do. Because that's too Why much don't like right. you and Bambi, instead of fussing with her. Oh, I heard they broke up, though. I heard whatever. they just then broke up. just you. Okay. It should have never been the BAM anyway. She always was trying to insert herself into Scrappy and Erica's like lives, like with their child. Where bitch, you not invited in this. You're not and a parent. And Bambi's gums did this thing to me where Bambi's she kind of reminded me of like I feel like Bambi was one of the gross sisters that but like grew up and mm-hmm. like put on lotion. Yeah. Cause like her like I don't know if it's, like, an overbite or what it is, but it was always, like, Bambi, like, why are you here? Yeah. And sometimes her weave is nice, and then sometimes it looks like she just has, like, a wrap just in the front, and then she let the back down. But Even like, though he had his motherfucking nerves trying to look at her crazy because she went out and actually got a fucking job and played somebody's girlfriend in that music <laughs> video and brought a check home. Like, I'm sure somebody Scrappy needs is a to buy terrible some boyfriend. Fucking, someone needs to go down to Costco's or BJ's and buy some all Juicy right. Juice for E-Money, <laughs> and that's all, like, that's all Erica has been saying, as far as I've seen. Right, and Scrappy has argued with Erica this whole season because Erica dared to say listen you need to take care of your daughter and he's mad about it like nigga if you would just pay your fucking child support what would even be the issue like angry enough to be like Erica can't come to your How mama's can you say tragic that you put ass somebody on? fake ass wedding wait I'm oh, sorry what put didn't he say on? something about like oh I put you on was I he put- talking to Bambi uh, everybody on sure that show swears that somebody that they put somebody on because you the same need thing to put on about Nico. name tags and go <laughs> to Fill work. Out some goddamn applications, shit. Target.com hoes. All y'all need some jobs. So anyway. Oh, nothing about Mimi and Nico and Stevie J and Margot. What? There's so, so much greatness <laughs> we could go over. Margot looks like a kiwi. I think Margot is, but beautiful. like not sliced. So, you know, like, um, no, I know what you mean, and I'm actually really angry with you right now because I thought Margot was pretty. It's just when she talks, she's a fucking idiot. You can tell she's had too many nose jobs, and her voice is all fucked up now, and she's just not the smartest girl. But if she would just sit there and shut the fuck up, I really feel like she could sell her face. Why are you still, like, you're still sitting here defending this nigga who stuck his whole raw dick in somebody's mammy on, like, the whole entire and he's so internet. so ugly. And he 
He's so ugly. Oh, God. How the fuck is Nico even like... <laughs> Nico looks like a Yeezy boost. <laughs> <laughs> How is he not a virgin? How? Why would anybody fuck him? Because he has a nice body and a, like a decent size But penis, he's I guess. hideous and, and his eat, teeth he, are scrambled. Did he eat pussy? I don't remember the, the video. I don't, I'm pretty sure he eats pussy, so like, maybe what, he's good at it. Is it that rare? What? Lil Wayne? Uh, Lil Wayne what? loves pussy. All these ugly ass niggas have fucking all the Well, bad- if you that ugly, you gotta eat pussy. It's really not optional, but still. And I still feel like N- Nico is yards uglier than Wayne to me. And yes. Wayne went out of his way Nico to Nico is ugly. much uglier like, than Wayne. Like, Wayne ain't even naturally ugly. Like, Wayne tried to be. If like, Wayne would take a shower, he would go up at least two grades. Uh, I'm too late for that. <laughs> I feel like if he could just get some of that built in dirt. He got weird random tattoos on his face and like. Well, Nico is truly ugly though. Just so, oh God, he's just hideous. Yeah, but Nico would. It just, my God. And I just can't even. Mimi and Margot, like both of y'all gotta be dumb as fuck because you're too pretty to be fucking with a nigga that look like this. He's ugly. But as it seems, um, Mimi also fucks Jocelyn and Stevie. See, it seems and like I that's just, what they're gearing us up for, and then I guess they're gonna make out or something. I don't know. So let me tell you right now, if there is ever, if that's ever like a storyline, Jocelyn and Stevie J and Mimi all eating each other's vaginas, I, that's where I will stop. I'm actually done. Like I'm done with Atlanta anyway. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm really looking forward to um, you know, this Hollywood. weird uh, uh, jacked chapter of Hollywood. As well of as, you, you know, both Tierra Marie's and, uh, <laughs> you know, both. B2K and everything. <laughs> That's so going we'll to see. be a train wreck. It's, it's going like, to be, but I mean, it's love and hip hop. Have you watched uh, Game for the Love of Game? I think this is what it's called. She's Got Game? She, whatever it is. I don't care. Flavor of Fun? I can't do it. I couldn't even finish. I hope you're not saying Game is fine. because I'm saying he, it's like Flavor of Love with fine people. Mm, mm, okay, well. I guess that's one way to put it. Well, but the women I are fine. I could not get through that whole episode. I mean, you, whether you take game or leave them, the women are, like, much more attractive than the women. That's true. Before. But every last one of them was introduced by their pimp who, like, introduced them, I guess, or was their gateway to this motherfucker. Like, it was a weird show. I mean, the game was just on my timeline, like fingering some girl at the park and then making her sniff it yeah i so, think it, right i think he's with I an 18 mean, year old now and nigga's like 37 so but anyway disgusting i can't do that one what what doesn't should not even be a surprise to you honestly so that's this weekend is that your breath smelling like boiled <laughs> bologna okay and we'll be right back listen guys building a website can be tough Where are you going to put that photo of those high heels that you just got from China? You know, how can I make a slider for my waist trainers? And, oh, how can I uh, evolve from selling tea on Instagram? Well, I'll tell you how. With Squarespace. That's how you do it. Squarespace offers you a trial right now with no credit card required. So you can start building a website extremely easily at squarespace.com and... You'll get 10% off of your first purchase right now if you use offer code READ when you go there. Yes, Squarespace has state-of-the-art technology to power your site that ensures security and stability. It's trusted by millions of people around the world, and we use it for our own site, This is the read.com. So if we can use it, we know you can too. Plans start at just $8 a month, and you get a free domain domain if you sign up for a year so again go to squarespace.com and use offer code read that's r-e-a-d to get 10 percent off your very first purchase with a squarespace build it beautiful and let's move on so we're back and it's time for our letters now it is send your questions to ask the read at gmail.com we may just read it on the show we're going to start off this week with a question from <clears throat> vina who says i have a fun question that is not related to fuck boys at all Thank God. Last week, you guys touched on the heavenly goodness of Talenti. I, too, am obsessed with pretty much every flavor, but my favorite is the Southern Butter Pecan. My question is this. Is Bluebell, which is back in production, still back? Girl, bye. Or has Talenti taken the title? If you had to choose between your favorite Talenti flavor and your favorite Bluebell flavor, which one wins? Love the show, and congrats to both of you. What's her name? Vina. Vina, you fucking tried it. No, she didn't. Um, first of all... 
<laughs> Bluebell is ice cream and Teleni is gelato. Okay. So right. they can't even be compared because they're not the same. Yes, they thing. can. <laughs> Don't nobody give a so, shit. So. <laughs> Yes, but your favorite, like, Bluebell flavor versus your favorite Talenti flavor, which one will win? It's going to be Bluebell. Are you fucking kidding me? Bluebell is fucking Southern, and it's perfect, and it's delicious, and it's awesome. And, you know, now it's got street cred. So Because <laughs> it took some niggas out? No. For the Listeria thing? No. What are you talking about then? You know, it's got scandal behind it. I think it would be hard for me, actually, to pick between my favorite Talenti flavor and my favorite Bluebell. Because... That caramel apple pie 20 is Girl. life. But that fucking <sighs> banana pudding bluebell, nigga, I don't know. That's, I don't know if I can make that choice, honestly. I feel like they're both. Bluebell, because my favorite bluebell, first of all, I'm still new to Talenti. The only reason I even tried it is because... There isn't Bluebell in New York because, you know, life. <laughs> okay. And, um,. Then when they said, oh, Bluebell will just cease to exist. Right. And they, you know, try to destroy my spirit with that. But again, what? We rise the fuck above. I didn't like think they were going to come back. Fucking ashes, bitch. What? You didn't think what? Don't ever disrespect Bluebell They like started that. laying people off. Y'all going to respect the queen. Okay. Well, the queen should have had her shit together enough to not have to take anyway, so many losses that people so... had to lose their jobs now. Shit. I love Bluebell, but that was fucked up. Caramel turtle cheesecake is my favorite Bluebell flavor. Oh, fuck. And, um... There are just so I'm many, I'm still honestly. new to this Talenti thing, so... Well, right now, my favorite Talenti... It's probably the caramel apple pie as well. Yeah. Or it might be the hazelnut chocolate chip. But it still does not compare to, like, even a teaspoon. <laughs> okay. Not even a teaspoon. I would not say all of that. <laughs> of caramel... Are you f- what? It's good as fuck. And I love Call Bluebell. Call me when Teleni has a strawberry cheesecake that's in season, bitch. And okay. let me know what that shit tastes not... like. And then we can First discuss all, it. Bluebell are... is the baddest First bitch. of all, you are standing for ice cream. And I'm not even disagreeing with you. I'm just saying Talenti is very fucking good. But if I had to pick one over the other, it would probably be Bluebell. Simply because they have been in my life longer. And I've loved them for like decades. So, while you can all And it tastes okay. better. All right. And that's fine. Let's move on. Our next... Even though I'm sure the people who own that company are racist. I mean, and you just sat here and gave them your all. Until they prove me otherwise, I'm going to continue to champion Well, let's just pray they nice never thing. say anything about Black Lives Mattering or anything else because I'm sure it's going to be some fuck oh, shit. Oh, yeah, I can't figure they can... <laughs> they can kill niggas, but then that's all right. Yeah. <laughs> Hey, better not be racist. Mm, mm. It's good. Okay. I'm not. Listen, it's fine. Our next. Tell that to the queens that still be eating at Chick-fil-A. All right. You, do you mean us? Because we yeah. still be. Okay. <laughs> and the rest <laughs> of the queens that also do it. All right. So the next question comes from uh, Legacy. <clears throat> and Legacy says, uh, it's a fake name. About seven months ago, I moved. I didn't know if you. <laughs> Seven months ago, I moved in with one of my friends, and things were going just fine. She's been in a relationship for the first four months, or she was in a relationship for the first four months, and her boyfriend was over all the time, which was no problem because I knew him fairly well. Three months ago, she and her boyfriend broke up, and since then, she has had seven different men sleeping over and rummaging around the house. All right. I've woken up several times in the middle of the night to find a random man drinking out of my juice cartons, eating my food, and watching TV in his boxers on the couch. I know we. I know she Bitch, drank the. Juice. You stop <laughs> oh, no. right there. <laughs> Not the juice. <laughs> Let me explain to you. <laughs> okay. How you shan't <laughs> fuck with <laughs> mine own juice. Yeah, I know how you feel about juice. It's not a fucking game. You are very serious about your juice. The only person who can drink out of my juice carton is me. And in that is in those, that's in those cases where I know no one else is going to drink from it. Right. Because I bought it and it is, my, it is in my home and I'm not giving any to anybody else. Mm-hmm. Somebody. You have the nerve to not only drink my juice, but drinking out of the carton. Do you not appreciate your your life? Are you not grateful for the life that God gave to you? Why are you so willing to risk it? Listen, we're not even done with the question. 
I know we're both grown and she can have sex or the company of any man that she wants, and it's not, and that's not my business, but I do not feel comfortable with this many men being rotated through our apartment at various hours of the night. Plus, it's now be- become a concern of my boyfriend's as well because one night one of her friends st- stumbled into my room drunk while I was in bed. Am I allowed to bring this up to her? What do I even say? Are I know you allowed she, to bring this up with her? Listen, is I Is she don't, living there rent-free? This is what she wrote, Okay. <laughs> I know she listens to your show religiously, so I'm hoping she will catch this. Girl, please help. I'm tired of sharing my juice food and home with half-naked men. Aww. Well, first of you all, said it again. I would like to um, appreciate the shade and the fact that you wrote this knowing good and damn well that she is probably going to hear it. It's real passive-aggressive of you. But I also want to say, girl, why in the hell do you feel so hesitant and going to her and saying, if you don't keep these niggas out of this goddamn right. house. I don't even understand, I don't understand what understand you mean. What's difficult about that. Are you, are allowed? you not paying to live there? <laughs> y'all are roommates, right? So y'all split the, split the rent and bills. So absolutely, you're allowed to say something to her about it. Like, listen, girl, I understand we all have our need for dick. But you need to keep your dick in your room. Don't have your dick wandering around the whole damn apartment At in the common the areas and shit. At the very least... You tell your dealers, your That's gentlemen it. callers, That's it. to do ju- what did Blanche do? <laughs> you ain't never seen none of Blanche's niggas <laughs> just chilling on the mother. Maybe one or two, of one them. or two. But most of the time, they were in and out. You never saw them niggas. When a nigga came over, Blanche was just getting ready to leave. Yep. That's how you need to live your life, young woman. Okay. There's if you want Girl. to have your legs uh free, that's fine. But at least respect your motherfucking niggas in her room while she sleep. Right, drunk? somebody stumbling Are you crazy? into crazy bitch. Now listen, that would have been the night we gonna have a motherfucking confrontation. I'd have cracked him over his head and then came and whooped your ass. <laughs> right, because why is a nigga so drunk that he don't even know which room is yours? Uh, going th- free through this house, and he woke me up out of my goddamn sleep. <laughs> That's you- grounds enough for bloodshed. In my opinion. I'm thinking about how pissed you would be if you got up in the middle of the night and there is a strange because nigga drinking juice. Because my roommate's <laughs> drunk bait for the night ah! is in my room on some bullshit. In my, just, you come home and it's a strange nigga on the couch just scratching his balls and watching your TV, running up your electricity, like. Look, bit Legacy. <laughs> Young lady, if you um, don't have the heart to tell these niggas to bounce when they're done beating it up. Yeah. Or if, you know, you just want them to kick, or, kick it or whatever and you, you know, are afraid, I guess, to tell them to stick to your bedroom or your private quarters or whatever, then you need to find someplace else to live. Right. You feel like, clearly, you have to find someplace else to go if you want, like, a bachelor pad or bachelorette pad. <laughs> like, because clearly... You just want the freedom to have your niggas walking around, right. swinging, cooking grits or whatever, and naked in the kitchen like Bing Rames did on Baby Boy. And she, <laughs> like, you have this whole other human being who is living in the home as well. And that shit ain't cute. So get your shit together. Like, I don't know if you're heartbroken or whatever over this nigga leaving you or you leaving this nigga or whatever the case it is. But you're going to have to piece, pick up the pieces. <laughs> pick it on up and figure it out. And you should not be afraid cute. to say something to her. Like, don't be scared to be like, so listen, girl, I understand that you allowed to live your life, but I live here. Here too and there's just certain shit you don't do out of respect for other people being in your home and this is a part of what you have to do when you live with somebody it's like a give and take it's a back and forth you have to adjust to what the other person's gonna do neither one of y'all can just do whatever the fuck you feel like doing you have to take the other person to consideration and it's not fair especially if you just getting up at one o'clock in the morning and niggas in his drawers drinking your fucking tropicana in the middle of the goddamn kitchen like girl I you would are... be wiping my eyes like look <laughs> like I know I don't see this I know I don't see your crusty nigga mouth with your nasty ass germs wrapped around <laughs> bitch. All I'm gonna do is I'm gonna count to 30 in my head. <laughs> I know I do not see this. In those 30 seconds you are a figment of my imagination. Woo! And I'm gonna give you those 30 seconds to get the fuck out of my goddamn house. <laughs> So that when I open my eyes and I come back to reality again, I can confirm that your ass was never here. Mm -mm. And then I can go and have a conversation with my roommate. But if you don't put on some pants (laughs) and get the fuck out my house when I went at the tone of the (laughs) beat, we are going to have a problem. 
boo <laughs> like dead ass because i'm gonna otherwise i'm gonna go the fuck off on you like there's no other option i'm killing your ass today uh, and them niggas will never have a problem telling you to get the fuck out of their goddamn house i don't know why you have him sitting there drinking you're a tropicana like you crazy get out Mm-mm. what the fuck is wrong with no, you no say something to her ass for real so all right do you want to do we have one from a straight man about marriage do you want to yeah. do that or should we quit yeah let's do that okay so this is from uh, Uncertain, and it says, <laughs> <laughs> listen, he put uncertain. Aren't all of you? <laughs> <laughs> I'm all right. So. A little bit. 20%. Uh, 60%. <laughs> please. After a major shift recently, I've been thinking deeply about what I want my life to look like in the coming years. While I'm still relatively young, I realize that I'll be middle-aged before I know it, and I'm feeling the pressure all around to finalize what I want. Oh, God. This includes marriage and children, but my dilemma is really centered on marriage. I'm in a committed relationship, and I think the world of my girlfriend. However, I have recently noticed that I'm uncomfortable with talks about planning our future and marriage. I admit that these are natural things to think about and discuss in a relationship, and I don't discourage her from expressing her thoughts or desires. It's just that I don't know if marriage is something that I really want. I'm not against it. I've seen plenty in my youth and as an adult, and the large majority of them seem to be functioning at a high level. It's just not something that I care about much or feel a true need for in my life. My biggest driving force for getting married is the feeling that it's the, quote, adult thing to do, like getting a job, getting a home, planning for retirement, etc. I mean, but, okay. Should I express this to my girlfriend now so the discussions can begin and I can risk losing her over an issue with which I have yet to make up my mind, or... Should I wait and risk potentially wasting her time that she could have been using to find somebody who loves her as much as I do and wants to get married? Thanks for your input. Sincerely uncertain. What a thrill. Why are you like that? In darkness and silence. I would say it is nice to see this coming from a straight man for once because it is I usually... I give my life. Not for honor, but for you. In my time, there'll be no one else. Crime is the only way. Okay, I'm sorry. Uh, no, it's fine. Do you want to just go ahead? And, was that your way of saying you're ready to move on or not? Because what? Metal Gear Solid comes out soon, and, and just you know, I'm in the mood. Is that a Broadway show? What are you saying, Malaga Sara? Um, uncertain. The thing about this, <laughs> I just don't get it. Like I, I, like you're saying that you don't. I guess he's saying the reason that he doesn't. It's not even like he is against getting married. He just doesn't see the he point. He doesn't want to. Right. It's not like, oh, I just really want to get married. But it's that he doesn't want to get, it's not that he doesn't want to get married for like a substantial reason. He just doesn't see the point. Right. Besides, it's the adult thing to but do. But he's saying he's uncomfortable like with the discussion of marriage. Like it's not like he would be totally cool with it otherwise. So, so. you're not ready then yet, maybe. Right. But and the I thing that I don't understand true. about it is that. If you are in a committed relationship and you're happy and that's a person that you could see yourself being with for the rest of your life and having a family with, then what the fuck is the, like, why not marry them? I don't understand that. Like, it just doesn't make any sense to me. And it's always interesting to hear straight guys say that they don't see, like, the point in it besides it's the adult thing to do. And it's like... It's always the gay couples that wanted to get married that were like, well, here are all of the goddamn things that you can do as a married couple that I can't because you niggas won't let me while you sitting here. You know what I'm saying? There's a lot of like legal protections that come with me. A whole lot. Lower tax rates and everything. What? Fuck out of here. So, you know, I mean, I just don't understand it. I feel like it really boils down to, I feel like it's more about marriage being something that's like infinite like it's a uh final destination (laughs) like this is it and niggas are uncomfortable not with just like the discussion but the idea of being with one woman forever and just like locking it down and just being with them until i die and it's like i feel like men think that once they get married that somehow all of the passion and life and love is just going to drain out of their lives and that they're officially old all the niggas say they're washed now (laughs) when they have like someone like that's like the thing washed it is and it's like 
first of all, that doesn't even apply to what the fuck you're talking about. <laughs> like that's not. <laughs> I don't know. Do whatever you are comfortable with. Like you're go. You have to be on two steady feet with your partner, and both have to be equally ready. I think before marriage is something that is, you know proposed yeah. don't but, i wouldn't say do it especially if you feel this way about it you should definitely talk to her but i don't think it necessarily has to be like a you know if i say something to her then she's gonna leave me based off the conversation either like if she's not trying to rush you into marriage then there's no reason why y'all can't have like a sensible rational conversation about how you feel about it like it's not going to get any better if you just break up with her like oh well she's talking about marriage and i don't want it so i'm just going leave like that's not going to solve your problem and you might be throwing a throwing away a relationship that's really valuable because you're too afraid to have a conversation so i would say yes definitely like crime is the way i okay. fly all right. All right. to you I'm, done. I'm, I'm, okay. I'm still good luck uncertain in a dream snake eater yeah! All That's right. what Pam did when she was finished or when she was singing it. Okay. That's the same thing Riley Curry did at the end of her Jesus Loves Me video, because too. Because Riley Curry is a fucking star. She is just Are you kidding life. me? What? Like, where's her fucking feature film? <laughs> Riley Curry <laughs> legit could be like. Yeah, child star. What Michelle and all of. like Not Michelle, but Mary Kay now. Yeah. Like, she should absolutely she have Way a fucking cuter. <laughs> feature film at this yes. point. Like, she's ready for her goddamn close up, and I don't know what you girls are waiting for. I bet her Steph, parents are, are keeping talks? her out of, the, <laughs> out of Hollywood and all that bullshit, so she. She won't be crazy. Yeah. I bet Aisha don't play They probably that. got that ring video doorbell for the angel, the <laughs> agents that come up like, we've got a script for nope. Riley. We, she's going to play the next, what was it? Penny from the next <laughs> Inspector Gadget. <laughs> we're all ready. We think it's perfect for her. Harriet the Spy. Oh, my Riley God. Riley Curry would be a perfect Harriet the Spy. <laughs> we are standing for a three-year-old. Live action, um, Angelica Pickles. Oh, you know what? Or Susie Carmichael. <laughs> She could be Susie. Mm. She could be Susie. But Angelica was kind of like the queen, like yeah, the boss. She was and queen I feel like Riley was Riley right. was like, listen, all you little kids. Be mad and now. Your little I kid want a bullshit. black Angelica. <laughs> I said it and I meant it. All right. Well, I think that's it for the questions. Send yours to ask three to gmail.com and we'll be right back. Hey guys, this episode is being brought to you by the great folks over at Ring. We here at The Read are urging you to come to the future and get you a video doorbell. And with the Ring doorbell, you can see and talk to anybody at your door from anywhere in the world just using your smartphone. So if you're at work and there's like a package there for you or, you know, uh, genitalia comes over or whoever is at your door, they'll ring it. It'll pop up right on your phone. It also has an advanced motion detection that alerts you even if someone doesn't ring the doorbell. It's like you're Batman. So why not get one? Yes. It is. And installing Ring takes just minute, it, what, minutes, and it works with your current wiring or a built-in rechargeable battery. So you can put your mind at ease and protect your home with a great video doorbell system. Like Kid Fury says, even if they don't ring the doorbell, the motion detection alert will let you know that someone's there. So again, head on over to ring.com slash the read for $10 off your very first purchase and protect your home and all your valuable assets with Ring today. That's ring.com slash the read for $10 off off the video doorbell system. We know you're going to love it. Protect your home and all your stuff. And now let's finish the show. So it's time for the read. It is. And I don't think I have one this week, honestly. Like I'm mad at a bunch of people, but it's the same stuff that I say all the time. So it is, isn't it? It is. It's really like, I feel like all I ever do is yell about stupid people and racism. <laughs> like, and there's the fact that there's enough of both for, to sustain me every week. But I just, I don't have the heart. Isn't that the nutty part? <laughs> there's Is enough of like it every week. Every seven days. <laughs> it's like, oh, so here's the crazy racist shit that we can yell at. Right. Like, here's something ridiculous. I don't want to yell at Peggy Hubbard and her raggedy ass beauty supply wig talking about all lives matter and that bullshit. I don't want to deal with fucking Donald Trump telling a reporter to go back to Univision with his racist ass. Like, I just don't. I can't. I'm sorry. No. So whatever you have, I'm sure it will sustain us all. I just, I can't. There is a um, a model by the name of Chantel or something. I think she goes by Winnie. Winnie Harlow. And oh, I've heard of her. 
she's like really big now. She was on America's Next Top Model, and um, she's recognizable for like um, she has vitiligo. Yeah. So she has like you know these like symmetrical um, like colors on her skin like from brown to yeah no i've seen her she's gorgeous yeah and she's like on the cover i think of ebony this month um there's a cover with like lots of like these really dope black models i think she's on there and um yeah a couple other people um so i guess tumblr caught hold of some people who have been painting themselves up like brown in the manner that she is. You know what I'm saying? So, Wait. like, white people have been... Vitiligo guess, blackface? Yes, like, vitiligo blackface. Oh so they're God. mimicking her skin. <laughs> no way. Using makeup and stuff to, like, I guess, pay tribute to her. So, of course, Negroes and allies <laughs> alike got mad. And what? were saying, you know, things about it being blackface and whatnot and how upset they were. The model herself, Winnie or Chantel, whatever her name is, she went on Instagram and Have she you said, Googled this? Have you seen these pictures? Yeah, I've seen the pictures. She posted it. Oh wow. On her Instagram. Anyway. Jesus. The um the caption says, This is her now. Okay. My response to this is probably not what a lot of people want to no, my response to this is probably not what a lot of people want, but here it goes. Every time someone wants fuller lips or a bigger bum or curly hair or brains does not mean our culture is being stolen. Have you ever stopped to realize things used to be ridiculed and now they're loved? These things used to be ridiculed and now they're loved and lusted over. No one wants to steal our look. We've just stood so confidently in our own nappy hair and do-rags and big asses, or in this case, my skin, that now those who don't have it love and lust after it. Just because a black girl wears blue contacts and long weave does not mean she wants to be white. And just because a white girl wears braids and gets lip injections doesn't mean she wants to be black. The amount of mixed races, something, something or other. But then she talks <laughs> about why can't we embrace the feeling of love and we need to love each other oh, and stop accusing um, those who are showing love and appreciation of being hateful, and it's very clear, and blah, 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 blah. hashtag heart emojis and all that. Oh, girl. So I already, you know, somebody tagged me in it on Instagram, so I saw it, and I left, like, a comment, which I forget that people, like, can see your comment somewhere on Instagram, so then there was, like, a screenshot and then whatever. But, mm. you know, mm. I – and I felt like I did – no, I'm saying that because I felt like I kind of may have – I don't feel like I did too much, but I feel like, I don't know. This is the thing. I'm tired of the whole we have to love on each other and just let's all clink glasses and drink cappuccino and be friends thing because it's unrealistic. And I think I understand what she was trying. I know I understand what she was trying to say, Mm -hmm. but I'm tired of people like... You can dismiss yourself from the fight without devaluing it. You know, you don't have to. Like, I understand that some people want to stand up for what they believe in and some people want to sit the fuck down. That's fine. I get it. But you can just sit down. Like, you don't have to sit down. Like, because when you essentially, I don't even feel like she's saying anything which it almost feels like you are standing but you're standing on the other side because Ooh, you're shitting deep. on because you are you're shitting on people who are offended it doesn't have to be their skin for them to be offended by it like when homegirl who was dating ryan seacrest dressed up as um uzo from oh yeah 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 i know Orange i said the new her black. fucking name wrong anyway when she when she dressed up as crazy guys her name is uzo i'm sure i said it wrong though no i don't think you did I think you got it right. They make fun of me. <laughs> Tell them I said. I try. Okay. Anyway, it's like, that's not me. You know, she's not making fun. Of, like, what, she wasn't making fun of anyone. She probably didn't think there was anything wrong with what she's doing. The point is that it's offensive, and it's offensive for a reason. And, <laughs> like, black people as a whole, and plenty of other people, in fact, are offended by that shit for a reason. It doesn't mean that every black person is offended by 
um, blackface. And there are probably plenty of people who are black and think that complaining about blackface is a waste of fucking time. It doesn't take away from the fact that it's offensive. And right. generally, we as black people find that type of shit offensive. Now, just because you probably felt like that was, you know, a tribute to you and, oh my goodness, you know, I'm this huge model now and mm-hmm. people live for me and it's nice to see people embracing something that other people may feel, you know, because cool but you sitting here talking about what well, we need to love each other and just because no one's stealing anything and all this so speak for yourself right now i think that we it's just unrealistic for us to say that we have to love on each other you know like because the fight that we're going through right now is necessary you know and it's when I say fight, I'm not saying that we should be out here shooting people or blowing things up or, uh, you know, riding like the fight in the sense of like the anguish and the struggle and the, you know, constant back and forth in this racial slum that we're in right now. Like it's necessary. It's important that we say these things so that young people especially understand the things that make us different so that we can be one. You understand? Like, we can't love on each other without respecting the things that make us different. Because, like, okay, let me say this then. Yesterday I bought, this is a really goofy story, but it'll make sense. I bought a, a statue yesterday because I wanted something to, like, spruce up my kitchen. You know, I'm trying to, like, I don't know how to design at all. I don't know what the fuck I'm doing. Mm-hmm. But I was just walking home. I was in Midtown somewhere. Um, and I walked by this smoke shop, and they had a whole bunch of, like, ancient Egyptian, like, art and statues in the window. And I saw this statue of Anubis in the window that I thought was really, like, I just wanted it. I thought that it was beautiful. Mm -hmm. And, like, I know enough about Anubis to know, like, what the, the, like, symbolism behind it and what he stands for and who he was to ancient Egyptian people. Like, I know a fair bit about it and, like, ancient Egyptian gods and all of that kind of stuff. But I really only bought it because I thought that it was pretty. So I felt <laughs> like a part of me, I felt bad like, the whole That's way honest, home. Though. Because I was like, am I appropriating something? Like, can you appropriate ancient Egyptian? Like, hieroglyphics? I don't even know how that works. Like, I know there are, like, masons and all sorts of people who I don't... I just... I don't know. Like, I was just confused. Like, I questioned myself the whole entire ride home because I felt like a dummy. I know that there's history behind it. I know that there are, like, tombs and places that are, like, real today that exist that have Anubis on it. And it means something. Like, people were buried with this dog this right. hound and it was it was something that meant something to people like someone who died who lived and was loved and died like that means something to somebody and I bought it and I put it in my fucking kitchen because I thought it was pretty you know what I'm saying like that's something that I don't feel like people think about like I feel like a lot of white people feel like oh well let me just I, I'm just gonna wear this dashiki you know because it's colorful to me and it's pretty or I'm gonna put a kimono on because I you know like took a trip to Asia right and it's like it fair enough, but that's the stuff that we don't think about. So I guess what I'm trying to say in all of my madness is that <laughs> it's unrealistic for us to just say that we need to hug each other and love each other and what. Yes, we do need to show expressions of love, but I think more than just loving each other, we have to be empathetic and we have to understand that we are different and we have different roots in our culture and our in our cultures and in our races that have to be respected and they have to be acknowledged and there are boundaries that you know there are things that make us different we can't just simply say well, we're all humans and we live on the same you know big span of grass and water and shit so let's yeah. just all you know whatever it doesn't work that way and it hasn't worked that way and this country was damn sure not built that way so we can't just now act like oh well let's all just hold hands and t- that we it's not gonna work so more than loving on each other we have to listen to one another you know what i'm saying we have to think about things before we just do whatever pleases (laughs) us and whatever makes us comfortable we have to 
have the meaningful conversations and respect the things that offend people and respect the things that don't offend people and talk about that instead of like, like this guy who I know we're still figuring out all the details behind this shooting in Virginia and stuff mm-hmm. like that. But the whole entire time I, when I woke up, of course it was the first thing that I see when I look on Twitter. And all I'm thinking is how this is going to end up being black people fault. Oh yeah. You know, because Cause it when black is. people <laughs> make mistakes, when black people fuck up, when black people, when a black person does a heinous, horrible thing, it's representation for the entire race, you know? And when a white person walks into a movie theater and shoots it the fuck up, they still come down straight out of Compton waiting for us to act crazy. You know, it's just like Ooh, little well. things like that, <laughs> that we don't really like, I can't say we don't talk about because people say it, you know, mm-hmm. but the pe- I feel like a lot of times the folks that we're saying it to don't want to receive it. And that's the problem. Yeah. You know, and here you are now perpetuating that same idea of, well, what the fuck is even the problem? Because I like the way that this looks or I don't really fuck with DeRay anyway or I don't believe that Sean King is really mixed or whatever. So it's just like. Right. No, I see what you're saying. I think your point about acknowledgement is really important because too many people who are privileged feel like, oh, well, the best thing to do is just not talk about it. Let's like let's not talk about how people are different, you know, with sexuality or race or gender or anything else. Let's just pretend that nothing's really there. And that way there won't be a problem. But the problem with that is that all of these harsh actions are taking taken against these people because they're different Mm -hmm. like transgender people are being murdered just because of it black people are being murdered just because of it white white, (laughs) women i was gonna say white people i don't know why (laughs) women are being murdered or like disadvantaged in their regular workplace or told what to do with their body like right and people are just kind of like well you know i just kind of want to go get a bagel or a frap (laughs) and watch TV. And it's fine. Like I get it, but you have to acknowledge this stuff sometime. It's not going to end until we do. Like we have to talk about it and go through the, I guess, uncomfortable phases of figuring out how to get past it. But it's unrealistic as fuck to say, here's all of this racially insensitive shit, all of this homophobic or transphobic or misogynistic shit that's going on right in front of our faces. But let's pretend that it's not because hugging each other is so much nicer. (laughs) Okay. Well, I'll hug you today and then I guess I'll die tomorrow. Right. Okay. Well, over here in the real world, we'll be dealing with real problems instead of trying to fucking sing Kumbaya and buy the world a Coke. Like Again, don't give, if you don't want to be a part of a movement or a fight, if and you I just have to go that. to work, I get it. Woo. Because the stress. But you can just do that. Like, you don't have to, at the same time, try and shit on the people who are fighting mm-hmm. like a meaningful fight especially if they're fighting that fight for you <laughs> like and God that's what damn. pissed me off so much i know i said i wasn't gonna do a read this week but this lady peggy hubbard have you seen her no. that grandma on facebook talking about well this baby just died while she was doing homework and victim of a drive-by shooting and all this which is true and it's very sad but she's given that same tired rhetoric that a lot of older black conservatives or people who think they're conservative have to say about like it's basically boiling down to like black people need to pull up their pants and focus on their own community and what about black on black crime and all this like girl don't miss the point in your effort to suck the white man's dick don't sit up here and act like the rest of us is something wrong with protesting police brutality because you feel like the bigger issue is black on black crime every race's biggest biggest problem with crime is within their own race so mentioning black black on black crime is ridiculous a black man is like the leader of the free world or whatever the phrase is yeah (laughs) and everything is that motherfucker's fault so much so to that it's like it's like an ongoing joke and white people think obama being president is a sign that racism is over when all it really did was highlight just how racist a lot of y'all are like all it really did was pull the blinders off and let us see a lot of you for who you really are so like that did you say a giant confederate flag that some white people made and put into a prom dress Oh. No, what? Some girl had a Confederate flag prom dress. It's like you don't even. If you're going to prom, sweetheart, <laughs> what? It's like no, 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 no. Wait, you're going to prom this year? Yeah. So you're gonna. What does that mean to you? What does that mean to you? 
it's not a good night unless we get to string up some niggas at the did end. Did your daddy or your uncle or granddaddy? Granddad? Who was? Did they die? Did somebody die in the <laughs> where you must have like blood that fought in one of these wars, girl? No. Because I, I don't understand your persistence and your like attachment to these things that black people and others are telling you are hurtful and offensive. It's like at this point, you're only doing it because you feel like Negroes are just being defiant mm-hmm. by trying to make a change, by trying to, like, rewrite history or some shit. Like, you feel like like this nation is being ripped away from your hands. Right. Like Oh, they really feel like they're losing America. They feel like they are losing their country. Theirs. America. The c- <laughs> we don't have to do it. I mean, we do it. <laughs> Every time. We do it every time. Every single every People already know. We, single time. we don't need no help going in on fucking life. But anyway, people. all I'm saying is you have to acknowledge these things and absorb them and then go from there. Some people like that white daddy on that on on white people. You remember the white boy who had like a a privilege workshop? Oh, like the documentary? Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. And then his parents came, and, like, his mom was like, oh, it was very nice. And his dad was like, yeah, it was cool. And the man asked him, like, do you feel any different? He's like, nope, <laughs> nope, but I'm proud of him. So, like, <laughs> They can sit know, there and have all the facts presented to them and be like, oh, well, I don't care. But that's fine. Like, it's one thing for you to say to me, I understand that you're struggling, and I've listened to what you're saying, and I could not care any less. Mm-hmm. I still, you know, I love what my life, and I don't want it to change, and I, and I just don't give a fuck about that. Right. That's one thing. It's a completely different thing to say, I know you're struggling, and I hear it, but, you know, stop shooting each other. <laughs> like When white people are historically helpful. more violent than we are. so <laughs> And it doesn't address the real issue that we're facing, like... Yes, crime is a problem, but we're talking about the systemic violence from police against black people. And every time something happens, y'all find a new way to blame black people. And people who kill other people statistically usually kill someone of the same race. Is that not correct? Yeah. Like, um, most crime happens within racial boundaries. So so when you bring up black on black crime, you might as well bring up white, white on white, white or Asian on Asian. It's just We've done for what, this. girl? Boar, <laughs> boar, boar. <laughs> Winnie Metwell or whatever the fuck her name is, I guess. I just... Don't I'm shit exhausted. on people for trying to right. like make to things to make a better. difference, right. and to at the very least, like even if you weren't personally affected by the photos, they clearly were so much so. Like I, she was a read for me once. Like, well, not her, but Tyra and them. We did a live <laughs> show because one of them niggas on the show called her uh, uh, his little panda, and she went up to him and said, oh, "I don't like that. I'm offended. I really wish that you wouldn't call me that or whatever." And he cussed her ass out, and Tyra didn't say nothing. What? Yeah. Yes. Like, I remember this. I remember wow. jumping to that girl's offense at one of the live shows that we did behind that same exact episode. It's fine if you're not offended by it, but don't try and, like, spit in the faces of people who are just trying to do the right thing or, like, stand up for, like, real actual issues. Right. Exactly. Whatever. Okay. So, I guess that wraps up the read for this week. Follow us on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram at This Is The Read, and check out our website, thisistheread.com, for links to... Every episode of You want a bad God bitch? Trina's the baddest. And I'm thick and fine from oh the cornbread and the cabbage, gosh. a savage. That was, um, you know, I've got a party coming up on Sunday, August uh, 30th. I'm not going. It's called All the Way Live. <laughs> I will and not be there. You can get tickets. It's going to be a, a jazzy function. It's inspired by um, my life as a bird from Dade County. Okay. And um, it's going to be great. It's going to be a, a jolly good time. Lots of liquor and ass shaking and things of that nature. Crystal's coming. No, I'm not. It's going to be fun. I'm not coming. So, you know. Um, I won't be there. You but get I will tickets be, um, at ADW. That's A as in um, abstinence. D as in dicks two bomb. <sighs> and W as in what can you do. All right. ADWlive.com. And um, that's a function. Um, shout out to the Friend Zone podcast. Oh, yeah. Destin Asante and our great friend, Fran. Friend, Fran. Fran. <laughs> um, you know, welcome to Loudspeakers once again. They're in their second week, so make sure you go and check them out. And um, shout out to Atlanta. We'll see you guys Friday for our show there. Uh, can't wait. We're very excited to see you all again. And, oh, 
Um, a whole lot of you have emailed and tweeted us um, about the shout out on This American Life. Thank you very much. Oh, yes. Um, thanks to We them. heard that, too. So uh, thanks to them for including us in their credits on that episode. That was very dope. Um, and let's see. Anything else? Are we good? Is there news? I can't think. I don't think there's anything. Oh, the readlive.com. We have tickets available for our live shows upcoming in Charlotte and I believe St. Louis. So if you're in those cities, the readlive.com. What about you, Kiffy? Or anything else? Um <laughs> No, you have no mind. idea. No, I really do. I'm just thinking of whether or not I want to, but we've already been here for 108 minutes. We have. And um it was going to be kind of dark. All right. <laughs> but um, Neon, I think that I'm going to maybe start doing live streams on uh, the weekends for Neon and I'll just fit in videos whenever I can. I like for the videos to have like a review and a playthrough and editing them is fun, but it takes kind of long and I'm like practically never going to be home in September. So is that like when you hook up your PlayStation and and play it on the thing? When you showed me, yes, the other day, <laughs> I don't know, I don't know the words for it, and you know, I don't. It's just live streaming <laughs> okay. video game. Then, yes, that. And okay, com- yeah, it's so violent. Woo. Well, that game was violent. No, I know you love it. I don't. You're gonna show me anyway, how to play one day. Just for you know, all the nerds, I'm also trying to catch up on some anime stuff because I heard y'all wanted me to talk about that. So, in case you were wondering, that's kind of on the back burner. So, you know, I haven't forgotten about YouTube. All right. Sounds fun. Anything else? Are we done? I'm done. All right. No acronym this week? Um, Maybe I should start thinking of acronyms. Maybe you should. Hmm, Maybe next week. Nope, I've got nothing. All right. So we'll see y'all then. (laughs)